Recently, we called out the ostensibly bad endings that were supposed to inspire shame and regret, but instead were actually cooler than whatever it was the game considered to be the good ending. I want the treasure! This is the bad ending, how? Turns out this is something that you, the secretly evil outside Xbox viewer, have also experienced as we received plenty of comments on the original video about other endings that the game called bad and we call badass. To that end, here are your top suggestions for the bad endings that were undeniably cooler. Please enjoy and beware spoilers for the following games. Not likely, bootlickers. <laughs> Initiate skip jump. Spacey RPG The Outer Worlds is a game in which your choices matter. It's not the best choice, it's Spacey's choice! Your decisions shape the world, your actions have consequences, and people remember the things you do. Particularly if those things are hitting them with a stick that makes their head change size. Opening Nowhere do your choices matter more though than right at the end of the game, when you have to decide which of the game's two main factions you're going to side with. Captain, you have an uncanny talent for complicating my life. Do you go corporate and side with the morally murky Halcyon Holdings Corporation, or do you trust the anarchist fugitive scientist Phineas Wells who got you out of cryostasis at the start of the game? You've left the board in tatters, but Halcyon is still on the verge of starvation. I just hope we're not too late. Whichever one you choose, you're going to have to use your ship, the Hope's Faster Than Light Drive, known as the Skip Drive, to travel to a specific planet. Tartarus for the board, Terra 2 for Phineas. Are you sure? That is extremely dangerous. Skipping the Hope will void the warranty on the skip drive. The Hope, being a highly advanced ship with a state-of-the-art onboard AI, will, of course, handle the calculations for this daring maneuver for you. Jump starting the skip drive. Destination set to Tartarus. Or, if you prefer, you can attempt to eyeball the skip jump yourself and earn the bad ending beloved of commenter DB, where your idiocy manages to get you and everyone else on board your ship killed. As they say, what about the bad ending in Outer Worlds where you skip the hope straight into the sun if your intelligence stat is too low? Absolutely amazing. I wouldn't advise that, Captain. Now, it is possible to make this jump yourself with a high enough intelligence stat. With a low enough intelligence stat, however, you can unlock another conversation option, marked as dumb, in which you confidently assert to your ship that you can figure this thing out for yourself and will be making the skip manually. You should not be doing this. The humans will die. These calculations don't look right. Why is this number negative? Despite the protestations of literally everyone else in the game, you make the skip jump and there is both good news and bad news. The good news is, you did actually manage to make your ship travel somewhere. The bad news is, that somewhere is directly into the heart of the sun. I'm sure the Outer Worlds other endings are very nice and all, but I don't know, considering the way I played this game, this just feels right. You have it, don't you? You know what that does to you? You know how it can change you. The recent Spider-Man games for the PlayStation may have given us the best received and most authentic version of the character ever seen in a video game, but did they have a bit where Wolverine shows up and starts quizzing Spidey on comics trivia? Exactly. Where did you first wear the black suit? Not your business. Don't push me, bub. This is Spider-Man Web of Shadows for the PS3, which not only gave us the spectacle of Spider-Man in a comics-themed pub quiz, but also included our other favourite thing about old console Spider-Man games, hilarious quick-time event fails. Cat! Gotcha! 
If you do manage to make it to the end of the game without hilariously killing off Spidey though, you were in a position to earn the bad ending suggested by commenter I am a person. Spider-Man Web of Shadows evil ending. You get to rule New York with an army and Black Cat. To get this ending you have to be a total jerk for your entire playthrough, accumulating black suit points for evil deeds as you go. The streets are going to be safe, gentlemen. What are you doing? This solves nothing! Actually, Luke, this solves everything. These losers have been played. Then you need to choose the correct bad option during the crucial decision you're asked to make at the end of the game. Take my hand! If you make what the game considers to be the right choice, you get the good ending, where Eddie Brock, former host to the Venom symbiote, sacrifices himself to stop Venom from destroying the city. Time to die. Like a man which Spider-Man claims as a victory for himself before swinging off into the sunset with Mary Jane. We gonna do this thing or not? If it gets you to forget that you caught me narrating. <laughs> yeah, you bet. <laughs> hmm? What? Oh, sorry, I nodded off there for a second. No, 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 great ending though. I love it. Just for completeness' sake though, let's take a look at the bad ending and see if it's, say, for example, way better. So long, Brock. Ah yeah, as you can see in this ending, black-suited Spider-Man with a symbioted up black cat at his side takes over New York with an army of badass symbiote monsters, which is obviously very cool. But what would Uncle Ben say? I always believed that with great power came great responsibility. And now... I never knew what power was. Oh, okay, f Uncle Ben then, I guess. This is undeniably a cool ending, setting the newly evil Spidey up as one of the most dangerous and powerful supervillains in the entire Marvel Universe. So dangerous, in fact, that even the other supervillains are teaming up to stop you with a symbiote-enhanced Wolverine. Bring me Spider-Man, dead or alive. I'm going with... Dead. I think the only trivia question this guy is going to be asking is what happens to Spider-Man when he gets an adamantium claw jammed through his eye socket? This old bird has but one desire. To protect the divine heir from those that might take his esteemed blood. So... The dragon's heritage has seduced you too. Then there is nothing to discuss. Take your leave. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is ironically a game in which you will die hundreds of times. However, you will die considerably less if you choose to go down the path of the game's bad ending known as the Shura ending. As commenter Howard Wilson says, what about Sekiro? Its Shura ending, which definitely is the bad ending, was by far the most entertaining. All the decisions you make in Sekiro revolve around Kuro, the kid whose blood can grant the resurrection ability that everyone is after. If you choose not to protect Kuro and instead side with the character Owl, you end the game early and lock off a whole portion of the game. So as we said, you'll be dying less. You do, however, get access to two new boss fights against the two characters who tried to enlist you to save Kuro in the first place, Emma and Ishin. It seems... I must cut you down before you fall to Shura. Beating both of them unlocks the so-called Shura ending in which you turn against Owl and succumb to your bloodlust, transforming into a Shura, a being that lives only for killing. I... The which, as commenter Howard says, is undeniably badass. Less so is the next bit, where you go on a rampage through the countryside and kill thousands of innocent people. So maybe let's focus on the bit before that, where you just have a big sword and a cool flaming arm. No! You're... You can't be sure of... Ah, yeah, that's the stuff. And so... I've decided... I want to live with you. Uh, live with me? Wait, what are you saying? Living with me means... 
Oh, I can quit being human if that's what it takes. Catherine is a puzzle game in which you play as Vincent, a man who suffers from vivid nightmares while being stuck in a love triangle with his long-term girlfriend Catherine with a K and a mysterious attractive stranger named Catherine with a C. <gasps> Who's that? <laughs> what, what, what are you doing here? Oh god, this can't be happening. It touches on themes of infidelity, fear of commitment, and childbirth with all the subtlety you'd expect from a video game made in 2011. Which is to say that you either commit to your girlfriend, or go to hell with a sex demon, and also there's a bit where you fight a baby who's armed with a chainsaw. Catherine has several different endings. Due to the aforementioned subtlety, the good endings involve you settling down to a quiet life with Catherine with a K, which is quite the contrast to the top tier bad ending as suggested by commenter Shiny Scrafty, in which Vincent chooses Catherine with a C and all hell breaks loose, literally. As Shiny says, the bad ending in the game sees you as the ruler of hell using the devil as a footstool and married to his daughter. Talk about badass. I'm sure we'll manage somehow. You human, what an all damnation are you prattling on about, eh? Turns out Catherine with the C's dad is actually Satan, she's a succubus demon, and by choosing this ending, Vincent ends up moving to and getting an apartment in hell. At least the rent's probably cheap. <sighs> Good morning, you. After a few short weeks, however, Vincent has completely taken over, growing horns, ruling over the succubi, and apparently using Satan himself as a footstool. Everyone acknowledges your power now, my love. Right, Daddy? <laughs> oh, hey there, Dad. Didn't, uh, didn't see you there. Which seems like a pretty extreme alternative to having a nice wedding in a bar with your long-term girlfriend, Catherine Developers. Did you happen to notice the central conflict that this game's masterful creators placed at its core? Yeah, I think I picked up on it. Thanks, game. Dr. Robotnik is Sonic the Hedgehog's eternal nemesis, a crazed scientist with a predilection for kidnapping animals who looks like a steampunk Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> Robotnik, aka Dr. Eggman, has been a constant thorn in Sonic's side, which is saying something considering that Sonic, being a hedgehog, is basically 90% covered in thorns. Eggman has shown up in almost all of Sonic's many video game outings, even subjecting us to the sight of him shirtless in Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, which is he going to wear the goggles over the glasses? You know what? It doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, you may be wondering to yourself, why doesn't Sonic simply kill Dr. Eggman instead of, you know, gently bonking into whatever robot he's currently in until he runs away? To which the answer is, Sonic did kill Eggman in the bad ending of Sonic CD for the Sega Mega CD. The plot of Sonic CD involves the eponymous hedgehog trying to gather seven time stones to defeat Robotnik and stop him from turning a sentient planet into his own personal fortress. In the good ending, Sonic does that and the planet heads off back into space, thanking Sonic with a shower of stars. If you don't collect all the time stones, however, you get a different ending in which Robotnik uses these stones to reverse time, something Sonic doesn't take kindly to, as commenter Natala Chow points out. There's Sonic CD's bad ending where Sonic destroys Eggman's ship by throwing a rock while doing a spin attack. He doesn't do that in the good ending, hence the bad ending being way cooler. The bad ending starts the same way as the good ending before taking a sudden and unexpected swerve as Robotnik uses a time stone and then tries to fly away on one of his little robot hover bikes. Seeing this, Sonic picks up a rock, spins up to top speed, and then launches the rock with unnerving accuracy directly at Robotnik's transportation, where it presumably smashes into something important because the whole thing goes up like July 4th on TNT Island. Sonic then turns to the camera and looks straight down the barrel, which, I don't know, anyone else getting your next vibes from this? Remind me not to steal any time stones in future. Thus began the Age of Fire. Ah. 
but soon the flames will fade and only dark will remain. Now, I could have sworn that the ending of Dark Souls is you frisbeeing the disc into a quarry after your 400th defeat to Ornstein and Smau, but apparently there is more game after that, and two whole distinct endings. Commenter Croft Frido knows what's up, however, with their comment on the original video, saying, Not including Dark Souls is a crime against humanity. Having all these weird worms bow to you in a cutscene knowing that you are a god rules. Now, as I clearly know, and haven't had to just look up because I never got out of Van Orlando, the final boss of Dark Souls is Gwyn, Lord of Cinder. After you defeat Gwyn, you have a choice. You can either kindle the final bonfire and sacrifice yourself to take Gwyn's place, or you can just take a good old look at that bonfire and then bugger off. Lighting the bonfire is, by most accounts, the good ending, and you can see why you would want to get it. You get to see a cutscene that features almost 10 seconds of your character on fire. I mean, it is Dark Souls, I wasn't expecting a dance party or anything, but come on. Undeniably cooler than that is the ending known as the Dark Lord ending, where you wander off and let the bonfire die out, at which point the Age of Darkness begins, which sounds bad, but the good news is that thanks to you setting everything in motion, you are now at the top of the heap, and will be in charge of things from now on. My lord, bless thy safe return. Let Karf and Frant serve your we are here to serve your highness. I mean, yes, you're mostly in charge of a bunch of gross primordial serpents, but I'll take that over being on fire. Thanks. Whoa. It, it, this looks like... A way out of Haran. Crane, we are running out of Antizin. We have to explore every possibility. Zombie parkour em up Dying Light's following DLC totally flipped the script on the original game by moving the action from a dense city to open countryside and giving you a car to get around in, instead of making you use your legs. Also, the car could shoot fire and electricity. Pretty sure your legs don't do that. In this DLC, your character, free-running enthusiast Carl Crane, seeks help in curing the zombie infection from a bunch of cultist weirdos called the Children of the Sun, despite that whole scenario having more red flags than free red flag day at a red flag factory. I'm looking for anything that could save my friends. If you have anything, We've shown you a path and a sign, Mr. Crane. The rest is up to you and your faith. Anyway, as you're probably expecting with that setup, Dying Light the following has two endings, and neither of them are exactly what you'd call good. By way of example, the best ending for this DLC is the one you get for siding with The Mother, the leader of the aforementioned Children of the Sun, who speaks in ominous telepathy and wears a super creepy mask. You see, breathing the fumes is one thing. But drinking the liquid is something else entirely. You know what, I think I'm good with the mask. At any rate, side with the mother and you wind up setting off a nuke that kills everyone and destroys the entire city, thus ending the infection and saving the planet. Thank you. Five, four, three, two, one. Hooray! Defy the mother, however, and you can earn the bad ending, as suggested by commenter Shaquille Adil, who says, Dying Light's the following bad ending, most likely the canon ending, in which the final boss fight has Crane slowly transform into a volatile slash night hunter as the fight progresses. That ending was awesome compared to the boring nuclear good ending. Yes, as Shaquille points out, you can instead defy the mother, at which point she forces an entire vial of her weird elixir down your throat, and you get a bonus boss fight against her. I'll show you who no, you no, 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 Over the course of this boss fight, you gradually transform into a super zombie yourself on account of said elixir. You'll see for yourself. By the time you defeat the mother, you're fighting her with your bare, rapidly zombifying hands as the volatile infection takes hold. In your new zombified state, you at last go on to escape the quarantine zone. That is less of a win for this family you meet, but honestly, who's taking their kids to the playground during a zombie outbreak? Kind of only got yourself to blame here, lady. Cool. 
I think we can all agree this is objectively way cooler than the alleged good ending, which basically ends with a fade to white. And is that a satisfying way to end anything? You tell me. Well, hey, you made it. Congratulations, well done. You've made it to the end of another patented Outside Xbox 7 Things List video. Of course, these list videos come out every single week, famously on a Thursday, which is of course why I'm wearing a t-shirt that says Friday. Well done, Jane, good job, me. But don't be like me, don't get it twisted. You can remember every Thursday, it's a Thursday, there's an Outside Xbox 7 Things List video. If only you subscribe to the channel and then press the bell notification button and then you'll get a notification every time it's a Thursday and there's a new video from us. If you'd like to watch more videos like this in the meantime, there are literally hundreds of them ready to be watched, like it's Netflix and you're having a binge. Uh, if you would just watch the playlist, click on the playlist, it's linked somewhere on screen. Uh, you do that, I'm going to get on with things and I'll see you back here in about a week, yeah?